Og Hoss and the others looked extremely pale. The gap between them and this barrow was just too great. They had now witnessed firsthand the power of those on the Absolute Dragon ranking. Boghoss also knew that although some of the top Absolute Dragon ranking disciples had the ability to kill ordinary 7th Tribulation True God experts at the early period, few of them compared to Barrow, who had killed quite a number of opponents at the mid to late 7th Tribulation. How could Maximus escape from such a powerful expert? Boghoss sighed. It would have been different if Maximus had a great power as his backer, like Boghoss himself did with the Imperial family. This had essentially buffered Boghoss from the Wise King's wrath, but Maximus would not be so lucky. All along, Boghoss had also been hoping to befriend Maximus, because his performance had made him certain that Maximus had a bright future ahead of him. Now, all that seemed a moot point. I hope Maximus makes the right choice. Even if it hurts his pride, Boghoss commented to no one in particular. Meanwhile, Maximus used his actions to express his answer. The mysterious god sword and the flaming dancing wheel appeared and attacked Barrow. Barrow's expression became stern. If you refuse a toast, you will have to accept a forfeit, he seethed. The top warrior on the absolute dragon list was enraged. His voice was so loud that the mountains around him shook. Boundless pressure descended upon everyone else present. Even with the two Nine Tribulations Divine Tools, Maximus was constantly at a disadvantage. From the beginning to the end, Barrow had never used any divine skill, let alone a divine weapon. A simple punch and kick had forced Maximus into a desperate situation. Marden and Lycan could not help but feel relief. Martin spat out. Huh, you go against Barrow, and this is the result. Barrow, who was in the middle of the battle, suddenly changed his expression and let out a muffled groan. He then looked at Maximus. A golden divine eye had opened between his brows. It was the golden immortal eye. Its mere appearance had dealt a fierce blow to Barrow's divine soul. With the Golden Immortal Pupils and the 8th Grade Divine Soul, Maximus had given Barrow a fierce blow to his Divine Soul. Even though Barrow's Divine Soul had also reached the 8th Grade, he was still severely injured. Damn it! Barrow raged. The killing intent on his body seemed to have solidified. For the first time, he used his Divine Skill. Demon movement! Heavenly punishment! He screamed. Demon energy surged out of his pores, as if a divine general were executing the ultimate punishment, slashing at Maximus. Maximus blocked with the mysterious god sword and the flaming heavenly dancing wheel in front of him. The two divine weapons were, after all, divine weapons of the Ninth Tribulation, so they didn't suffer much damage. However, the force of the vibration affected Maximus, causing him to wheeze and fly backward. Barrow grinned hideously and was about to throw another punch. However, at this moment, Barrow's scalp turned numb, as if an intense danger had descended upon him. He endured the pain he was experiencing in his divine soul and sent out a portion of it to investigate his surroundings. He was shocked to discover that seven extremely powerful divine needles were rapidly approaching him, preparing to launch a sneak attack. Barrow raised his head and roared furiously. Brat, go to hell, he screamed. It was beneath a top absolute dragon ranking genius to endure such a humiliating attack. A surging chill swept out like a storm, freezing the space. Although the pear blossom needle wasn't completely frozen, it was still greatly affected, such that it could no longer move in a stealth fashion. At this moment, even without using their divine souls, the numerous experts could still see the Pear Blossom Needle. Maximus could not hide his disappointment. He had never seen the Pear Blossom Needle's attack foiled in this way. Currently, Maximus had used all of his trump cards. He had lost the ability to deal with Barrow, unless he used the Nine Pythons Fire Flag. 
However, using a Chaos Divine tool in the Heaven and Earth sect was simply asking for trouble. It would no doubt attract the covetous eyes of ancient god experts. At that time, no one would be able to protect Maximus. Everyone thought that Maximus was dead for sure, but his expression didn't change at all. The dense cold energy spread rapidly. It seemed like it was going to affect Maximus, completely freezing him. All of a sudden, a vast golden flame appeared in front of Maximus and collided with the cold energy, devouring it. At some point in time, a figure appeared behind Maximus. This person had a smile on his face and a gentle expression on his face. He gave off a calming feeling. Barrow's expression changed as he registered recognition. Why, if it isn't Zinc Duro, he spat. Maximus turned his head and saw the man. He heaved a sigh of relief. The reason why Maximus had remained calm was because he already knew that there was a peak Sixth Tribulation true god hiding in the dark. This expert was probably no weaker than Barrow. Maximus didn't know why this expert was hiding in the dark, but every time he was injured by Barrow, this expert would protect him. Therefore, Maximus concluded that this person should be here to help. Subconsciously, Maximus thought of Kubo. All thanks to Lord Flame, Maximus expressed his gratitude in his heart. If it hadn't been for him, he wouldn't have been able to detect Zinc in the first place. Zinc smiled and said, Barrow, can you save me some trouble, please? If this kid is injured, I won't be able to explain it to my master. Barrow's expression was gloomy. The master behind Zinc was Kubo. Further, Zinc was also among the top 10 on the Absolute Dragon list. Barrow was extremely afraid of him. Plus, his divine soul was at this point. If the two of them were to fight now, Barrow was not confident that he could gain the upper hand. Thinking of this, he gave a fake smile and said, Since Brother Darrow has spoken, I will naturally respect his wishes. Let's go. The last sentence was clearly directed at Marden and Lycan. Marden and Lycan couldn't stay calm anymore. As Barrow's henchmen, the two brothers naturally knew who Zink's backer was. The Heaven and Earth sect was indeed a great power one of the three overlords of the eastern continent. But even so, there were only a few hundred heavenly generals in the sect. And in the context of the total number of disciples, this was nothing. Especially when one considers that of these few hundred heavenly generals, only a few became ancient gods. Kubo was among those select few, and thus enjoyed tremendous prestige in the sect. Even some ancient gods who had broken through from the Ninth Calamity, rather than rising first to the heavenly general level, would not dare show him any disrespect, for they feared his wrath once he himself broke through to the ancient god level. Although the wise king's prestige was also extraordinary, it was mostly because he came from the Rockbrook family, for that family's old ancestor was among the true giants of the eastern region. With this in mind, the two brothers smiled bitterly. They originally thought that Maximus did not have a backer behind him. But now, it seemed like his backer was no less a powerhouse than Kubo. And that meant they had just provoked one of Kubo's followers. They were in a panic. They were only Barrow's lackeys, not the Rockbrook family's lackeys. Once they got into trouble with Maximus in the future, the Rockbrook family would never stand up for them. Thinking of this, the two brothers started to hate Barrow. Why would the two of them get involved in a fight between great power warriors? That would be suicide. Seeing that the two of them were hesitating, Barrow glared at them unhappily. The two brothers were frightened. They hurriedly put away the resentment in their hearts and flew away from Aspen Mountain with Barrow, obeying him for now. As soon as they had departed, Maximus cupped his fists and bowed his head towards Zink, declaring, Thank you for your help, senior brother. Zink wore a smile on his face as he looked at Maximus from head to toe. His heart was filled with curiosity and surprise. The curiosity was at Maximus's utter calmness, and the surprise was at his extraordinary strength. 
curiosity was Maximus's calmness. It was as if he had already known that he would attack if he stayed at the side. Even the best of the elite inner court disciples couldn't compare to this guy. In fact, he could only certainly contend with those on the absolute dragon ranking list. Shaking his head, Zink simply commented, <laughs> As expected of a person that Lord Kubo has taken a liking to. He is in his own league. Even I can't compare. Nonsense, Maximus quickly responded. When you arrived, Barrow ran away. This means your reputation precedes you. Zink did not know whether to laugh or cry. What do you mean Barrow ran away as soon as I arrived? That's not significant at all. You had already severely injured his divine soul. That's the only reason he relented. Suddenly, Zink's expression became serious. Then he continued. I didn't exaggerate. We are of equal strength. Remember, you are only at the early stage of the Sixth Tribulation. When I was at that point, I couldn't compare to you. Maximus smiled. Seeing this, Zink acted quickly, proposing. I'd like to invite you to become one of my followers. Of course, this would only be temporary, and you could leave at any time. How could Maximus refuse such an invitation from Zink? This was clearly an extension of Kubo's sponsorship of and commitment to him, and Kubo's support was the ultimate prize. After seeing that Maximus was willing, Zink laughed loudly. He pronounced, Good, good, good. With you in our ranks, we will be able to confidently enter the Chaos Secret Realm. His tone then turned earnest as he continued. Although, advancement is terrifying. Your internal strength base itself is still too low. How about this? I have a fire attribute divine herb here. It is at the top of the upper grade. I suspect it will be of some help to you. Maximus waved his hand repeatedly, then demurred. How could I accept? It's too expensive. A medium-class upper-grade divine herb is just as useful to me. Zink shook his head, then explained. No, oh, I have already reached the peak of the Sixth Tribulation True God Realm. I don't need such herbs. Please. Hearing this, Maximus paused for a moment before accepting Zink's god grass and thanking him again. Zink sighed, then offered. Don't think I'm skimping either. I can only give you this one treasure because I have made it a habit of supporting many followers and have distributed my wealth to them over the years. I would never suspect such a thing, Maximus reasoned, then went on. If you have any requests in the future, I will do my best to fulfill them. Zink smiled as if he had thought of something. He threw a storage bag to Maximus. He said, this was left for you by Kubo. I don't know what's inside. You can take a look. With that, he turned into a ray of light and disappeared from Maximus's sight. Maximus smiled. Was this the reward for joining Kubo? In the 10th cave on the middle peak of Aspen Mountain, Maximus poured his primordial spirit into his storage bag. Right away, he was stunned by the huge amount of divine stones. There were at least a few hundred thousand of them. Many of them were upper-class varietals. They would allow the bloodline of the Red Skylark to evolve once again, and at the same time, allow its strength to improve tremendously. Kubo is really generous to have given me so many divine stones, Maximus mused aloud. However, in the next moment, he recalled that Kubo was a heavenly general true god. What he needed for his internal strength was chaos stones. No matter how many divine stones he had, they would be no more useful than pebbles covering a path. Maximus continued to scan his surroundings, and then a hint of shock and wild joy flashed across his face. There was indeed a fire attribute divine fruit inside the storage bag. And judging from its energy fluctuation, it was an upper-class fruit. The fruit in Maximus's hands was extraordinary by any measure. Even an Eighth Tribulation true god could benefit from it. And in the Nine Flames Fire Tower, 
there was always room in the planting space for such a rare treasure among the divine fruits. Still, such fruits would take at least several hundred years to mature. At that point, who knew what realm Maximus would have reached and whether the upper-class divine fruit would be useful at all. Of course, with the grade of the purple-black fire and the newly obtained upper-class divine stones, the ripening time of the fruit would be greatly shortened. Even so, it would still take one to two hundred years, or even closer to three. By then, Maximus estimated he would be at the upper reaches of the Eighth Tribulation Realm. That meant, in the end, the divine fruit would be ultra-useful. This is a timely assistance, Maximus declared, then happily placed the fruit in the planting space. After that, he stared at the divine fruit and pondered. First, he obtained a medium-class upper-grade divine herb, and then a medium-grade upper-class divine fruit. Maximus clenched his fists in excitement. What level could his internal strength base reach now? Maximus didn't expect to break through to the advanced Six Tribulation True God realm in a short period of time. That was unrealistic. Although the effect of the divine fruit was strong, it could only be used for breaking through at the critical moment. If one consumed the divine fruit on a normal day, its effect would be greatly reduced. If that were not the case, then surely great power geniuses would only need several decades to cultivate to an unimaginable level. The other method to greatly increase the grade of his internal strength base was to consume a large number of divine fruits at once. Yet the problem with this approach was that no matter how formidable a faction was, it was impossible for them to allocate resources to a single person. Normally, there would be many small groups within a great power. Focusing on one disciple would definitely be against the greater good. Kubo rewarded me with this medium-grade upper-class divine fruit, mainly to buy my loyalty. If he knew that I could absorb it now, I wonder what kind of expression he would have. Maximus mused, thinking of his ability to turn the stone into an elixir. He thought of Kubo's shocked expression and suddenly felt a sense of satisfaction in his heart. Yet quickly, he suppressed this feeling. No matter what, he couldn't tell Kubo about it. A Six Tribulation True God swallowing a medium-grade upper-class divine fruit? Wasn't that absurd? There was a high chance that Kubo wouldn't believe it. But if he did, it would be Maximus's turn to suffer. Putting the medium-grade upper-class divine fruit aside, Maximus scanned the last section of the storage bag. There was a small mountain of knowledge comprehension stones piled up there, and most of them were upper class. There were even some top quality knowledge comprehension stones. A trace of gratitude rose in Maximus's heart once again. Right now, he really lacked upper class and top quality knowledge comprehension stones. The upper-class knowledge comprehension stones were probably provided by Kubo for my other ultimate techniques, and the top-quality knowledge comprehension stones were for my purple cloud divine arm, Maximus guessed in his mind. In the cloud state, Maximus had once used the purple cloud divine arm. It was equivalent to a high-grade upper-class divine skill. No matter what, it couldn't be hidden from Kubo. If the Purple Cloud Divine Arm wanted to break through to the tenth level and become a top-quality divine skill, the top-quality knowledge comprehension stone was essential. Otherwise, it would take a long time to complete the process. Next, it's time to cultivate in seclusion, Maximus muttered to himself. He then entered the Nine Flames Fire Tower's House of Time. In the House of Time, the effect of heaven and man descended on Maximus's body. He was holding the upper-class knowledge comprehension stone in his hand, and he was trying to improve his golden immortal body. With these precious resources at his disposal, Maximus's comprehension speed was approaching the limit of a true god. Unknowingly, the golden immortal physique had broken through to the great completion stage, and it was still improving. At this point, it wasn't any weaker than the Divine Flame battle body. Now, the Golden Immortal Physique was approaching the peak. 
Yet Maximus's internal strength base was only at the early stage of the Sixth Tribulation True God Realm. If the Golden Immortal Physique broke through further, it wouldn't be easy for him to use it, and it might even damage his body. He would have to wait until he broke through to the late Sixth Tribulation. Maximus couldn't stop smiling as he felt the surging energy in his body. Now, his strength was certainly equivalent to those disciples on the lower rungs of the Absolute Dragon ranking. After leaving the House of Time, Maximus consulted Lord Flame and discovered he hadn't actually spent much time in seclusion. This was the magical effect of the House of Time. Now turn to upgrading your internal strength base, Lord Flame advised. During the period of Maximus's advancement, he had already refined the medium class upper grade fire attribute divine fruit and upper class medium grade divine fruit into elixirs. Maximus first absorbed the elixir from the medium class upper grade divine fruit. A surge of energy instantly filled his body. He circulated the Nine Flames fire formula, suppressing all of the fruit's energy and absorbing it, turning it into his own fire attribute divine origin. The medium class upper grade fire attribute divine fruit was enough to save a hundred years of hard work for a sixth tribulation true god. The fact that it was in elixir form only increased its potency. A powerful aura shot out with Maximus as the center. His internal strength base broke through once more, reaching the peak of the early sixth tribulation true god level. Yet at this point, the energy of the elixir was somewhat lacking. Maximus immediately knew that if he wanted to rely on this energy to break through to the middle sixth tribulation true god realm, the chances of success were less than 10%. Since the chances of breaking through aren't high, I'll use this power to stabilize my internal strength as a peak early stage sixth tribulation true god and forge a deep foundation for my next breakthrough. Maximus declared to Lord Flame. He released his energy judiciously, not letting any of it go to waste. Only when the last bit of energy was completely used up did Maximus open his eyes. Immediately after that, he flipped his palm, and three jade bottles appeared in his hand. These were the elixirs provided by Lord Flame. He had divided the results of his extraction process into three parts to protect Maximus, for if he ingested the entire elixir quantum in one gulp, the result would be severe injury to his body. Maximus uncorked the first bottle and swallowed the contents. Scorching energy circulated in his meridians. The bottleneck that was as stable as Mount Everest suddenly turned into a thin piece of paper. It was as if it could be broken with a poke. Maximus couldn't help praising himself at this moment. The fact that he had continuously tempered the peak of the early Sixth Tribulation was now paying off, and he could safely advance to the next stage. Now that he could feel the bottleneck loosening, Maximus pushed forward with all his might, charging toward the middle stage of the Sixth Tribulation True God Realm. He didn't experience difficulty at all. He only felt that all the process was effortless, even inevitable. At this moment, Maximus was no longer at the early stage of the Sixth Tribulation True God, but at the mid-stage. He could not help but think of the fact that the increase to his combat strength would be significant as a result. Maximus didn't know what level he would be on the Absolute Dragon list, but he was at least at the medium rank. The gap between him and Barrow, who was at the top, was shrinking. Maximus's expression turned cold as he recalled the helplessness he felt when he faced Barrow. He took a deep breath and suppressed all his thoughts. Then he focused all of his attention on advancing his internal strength base. After breaking through to the middle stage of the Sixth Tribulation True God Realm, the elixir's energy had not been completely depleted. As a result, Maximus's strength was still growing at a constant rate. Only when he could feel the first quantum of elixir becoming non-existent did he uncork the second bottle. Instantly, the originally stagnant internal strength base's growth once again soared. Before entering seclusion, Maximus's goal had been merely to reach the peak of the middle Sixth Tribulation True God realm, 
he didn't even consider the upper level. In the Heaven and Earth sect, he had enjoyed so many resources. Barrow and the other geniuses had been cultivating for thousands of years, but none of them had managed to break through to the Seventh Tribulation True God realm. So how could he dream of reaching that goal before them? But reality told Maximus that he had underestimated the terrifying energy contained within the upper-class, medium-grade divine fruit. He had also underestimated the effect of absorbing 100% of the energy after turning it into an elixir. By the time the second bottle of energy was used up, Maximus had already reached the peak of the mid-Six Tribulation True God realm. He was pleasantly surprised. He began to muse to himself. Could it be that now I can break through to the late stage of the Sixth Tribulation True God Realm? This is too fast. Maximus's pupils shrunk as he thought of a possibility. Surely there was a reason Barrow and Zinc had not gone through this same process and advanced to the Seventh Tribulation. Of course, it was because this would prohibit them from entering the Chaos Secret Realm. Maximus's guess was correct. In fact, Apart from Barrow and Zinc, there were many other geniuses who had consciously suppressed their internal strength base. They had done so with varying success. Given the exceptional environment of the Heaven and Earth sect, many of them had broken through to the high-level True God realm by accident, thus rendering them ineligible to enter the Chaos Secret Realm. Zinc and Barrow had almost reached the edge of being suppressed. This was one of the reasons why Barrow immediately withdrew after Zinc stepped out to protect Maximus. Neither of them wanted to fight further. Otherwise, if they accidentally broke through, all their previous efforts would be wasted. After swallowing the third elixir bottle, the peak, mid-tier, true god six tribulation level quickly stabilized within Maximus. His foundation gradually deepened, becoming more and more profound. It was only when he reached the peak that he instantly broke through to an even higher level. Maximus's aura now soared. He let out a long roar, causing the cave to shake. He had stepped into the late stage of the Sixth Tribulation. At this point, every step required an even greater amount of energy. As such, he hesitated to push further, but he was already satisfied. Maximus mused to himself. I'm near the same level as Barrow and Zinc now. I wonder what my overall strength is like. He could not wait to find an opportunity to test his new strength. However, he quickly suppressed this thought. With opponents like Barrow lurking around, it wasn't suitable for him to reveal his true combat strength for the time being. He would be wise to wait until the opening of the Chaos Secret Realm. Maximus didn't want to stay in the tenth cave of the Middle Peak anymore. The internal strength environment there didn't have much of an effect on him at this point. It would take at least a thousand years or even longer for him to cultivate to the level of a high true god in such an environment. He thus couldn't help but ponder the caves at the upper peak of Aspen Mountain. Though the leap in prestige and standards was significant, from Maximus's point of view, this was the only way he could break through to the Seventh Tribulation in a few hundred years' time. With this in mind, Maximus wanted to challenge the inner sect disciple at the peak of Aspen Mountain. Aspen Mountain was only ranked at the medium grade among the numerous peaks where the inner sect disciples resided. As such, the challenge seemed surmountable to Maximus. With this in mind, he hurriedly left his cave. It wasn't until this moment that Maximus noticed that he had spent a total of 20 years cultivating in seclusion. He mused, I never thought that 20 years would pass in the blink of an eye. But I guess even though the upper class medium grade divine fruit elixir was powerful, it still took some time. He took a deep breath, then pondered, adding the four years I spent in the divine flame mountain and the time I spent to comprehend the Golden Immortal Physique, it has been nearly 30 years since I arrived at the Heaven and Earth sect. 
There are only 70 years left until the opening of the Chaos Secret Realm. I will try my best to improve my internal strength base and break through to the peak sixth tribulation in this time. At the same time, Maximus knew that even if he were the top cultivator in the sect, he wouldn't be able to break through so easily in just a few decades. As such, he had to enter the Divine Spring Mountain to cultivate. And to do that, he had to obtain Cosmos points. After claiming a cave dwelling at the top of Aspen Mountain, I'll go to the Heaven and Earth Sect Assignment Hall to accept a mission, he declared to himself. Maximus chose a dwelling on the upper peak of Aspen Mountain that was ranked at the lower end. In the cave, a yellow-clothed intersect disciple's divine soul swept over Maximus, and the disciple's expression instantly turned ugly. How could it be him? Damn it! What should we do now? The disciple declared. The battle more than 20 years ago had an astonishing afterlife, especially after it attracted Barrow's attention. Everyone, it seemed, knew who Maximus was and what he was capable of. Of course, this had to do not only with the fact that Maximus was as strong as those on the Absolute Dragon ranking, but also the fact that he was a follower of Zinc, who was in turn a direct disciple of Kubo. Maximus was thus thought to have the full unwavering support of Kubo. The yellow-clothed intersect disciple clenched his teeth, then thought, with my strength, I might be able to take him on, but if I injure him accidentally, I risk offending Zink and Kubo. Ah, forget it. It's just a cave dwelling. I should just give it up. He then addressed Maximus. Junior brother Alexei, hello. I see you've taken a liking to my cave dwelling. Please, there's no need for us to engage in a bout. I will just give it to you. At the same time, he made an inviting gesture with his hand. Maximus was stunned. He hadn't even made a move yet, and this elite intersect disciple had already relented? However, Maximus's goal wasn't to fight the intersect disciple, but to obtain a high mountain cave. There was no need to counter the proposal. After hesitating for a while, Maximus cupped his hands and said, Thank you, senior brother. With that, he moved into the cave. As for the yellow clothes intersect disciple, he went to challenge a lower ranked disciple and promptly took over her cave. A few days later, Maximus flew away from Aspen Mountain and arrived at the Heaven and Earth Sex Assignment Hall. The hall was bustling with people. From time to time, one could see powerful experts within the Heaven and Earth Sex and intersect disciples. Even core disciples, whose strength had reached the level of an upper echelon true god, were a common sight here. Further, though Maximus was quite famous on Aspen Mountain, in the context of the broader Heaven and Earth sect, he was a nobody. As such, no one even noticed him. Maximus quietly progressed through the hall and came to the section where missions were posted. The missions on the Heaven and Earth sects were divided into nine levels. White, red, orange, yellow, green, teal, blue, purple, and gold. White level missions corresponded to outer sect disciples and lower level intersect disciples. Not only were the rewards extremely small, but the tasks tended to be overly simple. As a result, most heaven and earth sect disciples rarely accepted white level missions. Red level missions corresponded to ordinary intersect disciples. Orange level missions corresponded to elite inner court disciples. Yellow level missions corresponded to the absolute dragon ranking intersect disciples. Green level missions, teal level missions, and blue level missions corresponded to ordinary core disciples, managing core disciples, and core disciples on the universe list, respectively. Those on the universe list were nearly all considered future heavenly generals and heavenly monarchs. A purple level mission corresponded to a heavenly general true god. Of course, it was also fine if a heavenly monarch true god wanted to accept it. Gold level missions were assigned to lower ancient gods who had broken through from the Ninth Calamity without first becoming heavenly generals. 
As for mid-level ancient gods, they were all treasures of the Heaven and Earth sect. They didn't need to do missions to obtain a large number of Cosmos points. At this point, Maximus was focused on the Yellow Rank missions, and there were not many of them. The reason was that most Absolute Dragon ranking disciples were busy cultivating in seclusion and didn't have spare time to complete missions. In this section of the hall, there were only a few dozen Yellow Rank missions. They varied in terms of the number of Cosmos points offered, though the span was not too large. However, there were also other rewards at play. These were usually given to the person who issued the mission. One had to understand that these missions were often issued by parties outside the Heaven and Earth sect, who had used the Forum of the Mission Hall to recruit powerful disciples of the sect to meet their needs. Maximus soon fixed his attention on a Yellow Level mission that offered 10,000 Cosmos points, as well as Upper Class Fire Attribute Divine Crystals and a large number of Upper Class Divine Stones. He planned to use the crystals to advance the Nine Flames Fire formula. Once this happened, the power of the Purple Black Flame would be enhanced, and so would his Divine Essence, Divine Body, and Divine Soul. This was a comprehensive improvement, and it went far beyond the typical inner strength-based breakthrough. In addition, with the improvement of the Purple Black Fire, the ripening time of the upper-class medium-grade Divine Fruit would also be reduced. As for the upper-class Divine Stones, Maximus planned to use them to upgrade the Vermilion Bird and the other beasts. Maximus approached the person in charge of the assignment hall and accepted the mission. The person in charge took Maximus's token and frowned. She commented, A Junior brother, you are still an elite inner court disciple. It is not appropriate for you to accept a yellow level mission. I recommend you go down a level. Maximus had just entered the summit of Aspen Mountain a few days ago, and the Absolute Dragon ranking system had yet to feature him. As such, the mark on Maximus's Heaven and Earth token was still at the level of an elite inner court disciple. He naturally knew that this senior brother in charge had good intentions, but he still shook his head and said, Don't worry, if I am accepting the mission, I surely have a reason to be somewhat confident, right? All right, the mission overseer responded in a somewhat hesitant tone. At the same time, she did not notice that one of her assistants had quietly sent a message. Outside the assignment hall, Maximus turned into a ray of light and disappeared into the horizon. At the same time, elsewhere in the sect, Notori held the Jade Tablet and laughed loudly. I have finally tracked him. <laughs> My assistants aren't as incompetent as they see. At the same time, Notori knew that he had only been able to gain this special knowledge because he had the powerful Yoji family behind him. One had to know that the Heaven and Earth Sect Mission Hall was in charge of recording the status of the disciples who volunteered for missions. Several assistants were assigned to manage each mission. Thus, in order to learn what kind of mission Maximus accepted, Notori had to bribe many assistants. This was in addition to flexing his prestige. The heavens have treated me well. My luck is pretty good, he commented to himself. <laughs> so the mission is in Mountain Peace City. I will set up an ambush on the way back. Several Yoji family ancestors are waiting to strike, so I will let them know when the time is right. The family will no doubt send an Eighth Tribulation True God expert. That brat won't stand a chance. At this thought, Notori's expression grew more and more excited, as if he had taken an aphrodisiac. Then he, too, turned into a streak of light and left the Heaven and Earth sect. Mountain Peace City was a small city in the Azure province. The city lord there came from the Jenkins family, and his internal strength base had reached the peak of the true god's seventh tribulation. That was not the extent of this family's power, however. They also had several other seventh tribulation true god experts. After learning the information about Mountain Peace City, Maximus could not help but sigh. Sure, the city was small, 
but any metropolis in the Azure province carried a significant degree of prestige. After arriving, Maximus went straight to the city lord's mansion, for it was the city lord himself, Wynne Jenkins, who had issued the mission. The mission had two parts. One was to investigate a vicious beast forest just outside the city. The other was to find the city lord's eldest daughter, whose name was Mirabella. These two missions were somewhat related to each other. The vicious beast forest had always been used by Mountain Peace City to train the younger generation. As a result, many of the strongest beasts had been killed, and the most powerful living beast was only at the fourth level. However, not long ago, something quite mysterious began happening. All the young people who entered the forest to train had disappeared. Mirabella, who was one of the top disciples among the younger generation, had immediately gone to investigate the situation, but had never come back. This had caused shock throughout the city, as well as great personal sorrow for Wynne. Mirabella had broken through to the Fifth Tribulation True God realm within 10,000 years, then quickly advanced to the Sixth Tribulation. Yet still, she had not re-emerged. Could it be that there were in fact level six vicious beasts lurking in the forest? Immediately, Wynne sent a seventh Calamity True God from his clan, but this seventh Calamity True God didn't come back either. Everyone in the city began to panic. How was this possible? Wynne kept roaring in his heart. Every hundred years, he would sweep the area, making sure that no beasts above the fourth level had emerged. Wynne had thus determined that there must be something strange about the inner part of the forest. As he pondered venturing into the forest to rescue his daughter and the others, Wynne knew it would be foolish to endeavor on the task alone. Thus, he had resolved to join forces with a good number of Seventh Tribulation true gods in Mountain Peak City. But still, he felt worried, so he decided to ask for help from the Heaven and Earth sect and issued a Yellow Level mission. Originally, Wynne had planned on issuing an Orange Level mission to seek help from the Heaven and Earth sect's elite inner court disciples. However, the overall strength of the elite inner court disciples was roughly equivalent to an ordinary early Seventh Tribulation true god, so they likely wouldn't prove much help. As such, Wynne chose the Yellow Grade mission in the end. As for the possibility of a Green Grade mission, it wasn't as if Wynne hadn't considered the idea, but given his family's resources, he simply didn't have the quantity and quality of treasure to attract a large number of core disciples from the Heaven and Earth sect. He would need a treasure that could help these disciples break through to the limit of the true God realm, after all. And these were rare, even in the Heaven and Earth sect territory. Soon, Maximus arrived at the City Lord's mansion. The guards immediately stopped him. Due to Maximus's extraordinary aura, these guards did not dare to act recklessly. The leader of the guards cupped his fists and said, What brings you here, sir? Maximus responded in a confident, calm tone. I, Maximus, am a Heaven and Earth sect inner court disciple. The guard who cupped his fists at Maximus was shocked and immediately became overjoyed. He knew that the city lord had asked for help from the Heaven and Earth sect. Immediately, the respectful expression on the guard's face became even more exuberant. Sir, please wait for a moment. I will go inform one of my superiors. The guard quickly expressed, afraid that he had somehow already offended this important visitor. Fortunately, Maximus wasn't an unreasonable person. He nodded his head and waited on the spot. The guard cupped his fists once more and turned his head to enter the city lord's mansion. Soon, a streak of light rushed over in a panic. After it landed on the ground, a slightly plump, middle-aged man appeared. This was none other than City Lord Wynne. In terms of strength, Maximus was definitely stronger than Wynne. But no matter what, Wynne was still a high-level true god. 
Maximus thus showed proper respect as he stated, City Lord, greetings, bowing his head slightly. Maximus Alexei, I will get straight to the point. As long as you can save my daughter, whatever request you have, as long as I can oblige, I will do my best to fulfill it. Wynne expressed with a mix of anxiety and excitement. From this, it could be seen that Mirabella had an extraordinary position in Wynne's heart. Facing a father who was worried about his daughter, Maximus felt moved to warmth. He immediately said, The rewards set out in the mission are perfectly adequate, and I will request nothing more from you. However, at this moment, another ray of light descended. Maximus turned his gaze away. A young girl wearing a pale yellow dress appeared in his line of sight. The young girl's expression was full of urgency. When she saw Maximus, she pleaded, Sir, please save my sister. I would do anything to see her again safe and sound. Wynne seemed slightly embarrassed by his daughter's outburst, but quickly explained, Maximus, this is my second eldest daughter, Concha. Please forgive her exuberance. She and her sister are quite close. Maximus waved his hand with a smile, then offered, Sir, don't worry. I understand completely. I would like to get to work on the mission right away. Concha was slightly crestfallen. She had secretly hoped that Maximus would recruit her, and so she could play a direct role in saving her sister, whom she indeed valued over all others. Now, embarrassed, she sized up Maximus for the first time. Previously, she had only treated Maximus as her elder sister's last straw of hope. Now that she had returned to her senses, however, she was curious. Both she and her sister were known as great beauties, but Maximus didn't seem at all interested. Was this typical of great geniuses from the top sex? She wondered. Maximus interrupted her thoughts, however, stating, There's no time to lose. Let's set off now. Wynne was more anxious than even Maximus to get started, but this strange forest was too dangerous. He had to make preparations in advance. Therefore, he advised, Please wait for a moment, my friend. I still have to gather the other experts in my mansion. We need their help, despite your obvious abilities. Trust me, it will be much safer. Maximus was here to complete the mission. As long as he could do that, it didn't matter to him how much help he had, so he nodded in a straightforward manner. I have already sent a message to my helpers. They should arrive in a moment. Now, I would like to invite you to the main hall, Wynne proposed. They made their way to the imposing and richly decorated room. But before they could even take their seats, a tall and sturdy man with red hair walked in. His aura was imposing second only to wins. He spoke confidently. City Lord, I heard that the expert from the Heaven and Earth sect has already arrived. Shall we set out? Through Lord Flame, Maximus had long known that Wynne was a late-stage Seventh Tribulation true god. This burly man with red hair was probably thus at the intermediate Seventh Tribulation. Wynne said, There are still a few people who haven't arrived yet. Let's wait for a moment. This is Maximus Alexei, by the way, of the Heaven and Earth sect. Wynne introduced Maximus to the red-haired, burly man. At the same time, he spoke to Maximus via divine sense to introduce his peer. Wynne conveyed via voice transmission. Maximus, this is Brocon Hunt. He is at the mid-stage of the Seventh Tribulation. You see... One of his grandsons is among those missing in the forest. Maximus now understood. No wonder Brocon had come so quickly. It turned out that this was a family matter for him. At the same time, after Wynne introduced Maximus, Brocon studied the newcomer. He could not help but comment. Junior Brother Alexei, you are already a distinguished intersect disciple of the Heaven and Earth sect. Yet you are so young. No doubt your future is limitless. If you can save my grandson, I will reward you handsomely. Sir, rest assured, I will do my best, Maximus declared. 
as soon as he finished speaking, another high-level true god arrived at City Lord's mansion. She was followed by several more. The other seventh tribulation true gods from the Jenkins family, however, would stay behind in the city. This way, if something happened to win, the family would still prosper. The other great families of Mountain Peace City were not in a position to be so cautious, however. If they had a seventh tribulation true god in their ranks, they would send them to the vicious beast forest. After all, this was a tremendous opportunity to enhance one's reputation and assure the long-term protection of the city. Soon, a total of nine Seventh Tribulation True God experts had gathered in the City Lord's mansion. One of them had brought along a follower. He was criticized by a peer, who commented, Alea, what are you doing? This is an extremely dangerous journey. Why would you bring a junior with you? Of course, having a younger and weaker warrior tagging along would also slow down the entire group. Yet the Seventh Tribulation expert, known as Alaire, lifted his head proudly and declared, My grandson is not an ordinary genius, trust me. Journeying to the forest is the perfect opportunity for him to break through to the Seventh Tribulation True God realm. The surrounding high-level True Gods curled their lips. After thousands of years of internal strength training, this young person had only reached the peak of the Sixth Calamity True God Realm. He really wasn't as special as his grandfather believed. Looking at Alaire's arrogant expression, they rolled their eyes. However, they couldn't bully a young warrior by refusing to allow him to accompany them, so they remained silent. Alaire looked around and shot the others a proud, uncompromising look. He had only restrained himself when he saw Wynne and Concha. His heart burned for Concha, but she turned her head in disgust. Wynne was annoyed by Alaire's advances toward his daughter, as usual, but he needed Alaire's help in this mission so he could only endure the feelings. When he thought that he still needed old Alaire's help in finding his daughter, Wynne could only endure it. He thought to himself, however, You want my daughter to marry you? Dream on! Even if she marries an ordinary mid-level true god, she won't choose a man with a terrible character like you. At the same time, Alaire was thinking to himself, Ah, this is the perfect opportunity. I will save Mirabella myself and emerge from the vicious beast forest a hero. Then I'll seize the opportunity and ask Concha to marry me. There's no way the city lord would refuse me at that point. At this moment, Hilaire saw Maximus and had a plan in his mind. He went on, still talking to himself. A heaven and earth sect disciple? If I can suppress him, I will prove my superiority to even the heaven and earth sect elites. Thinking of this, he addressed Maximus. I've long heard that heaven and earth sect disciples are superior on all fronts. So, uh, may I ask you for some pointers? He looked straight at Maximus, his eyes full of provocation. All the other geniuses present could also sense the disingenuousness and ridicule in Alaire's voice. They were shocked by his gall. Would he really risk offending the heaven and earth sect? Did he really think so highly of himself? Alaire, don't be rude, Wynne interjected. Alaire shot back. Rude? What do you mean? I was simply requesting guidance from a warrior stronger than I. The faces of those who knew Alaire were all twitched. Of course, he was planning to ingratiate himself to Maximus because he wanted his own grandson to one day enter the Heaven and Earth sect. Maximus was a mere social stepping stone. Wynne interrupted with a gloomy expression. Look, Alaire, I can't stop you if you want to enter the Vicious Beast Forest. But if you don't make it out alive, don't say I didn't warn you. Maximus slowly stood up. He said plainly, Do you want me to give you some pointers? Of course, uh, please. Alaire continued to provoke him. Maximus smiled faintly, then shot back. If that's the case, make your move now. 
A furious expression emerged on Hilaire's face as he spat out. As expected of a Heaven and Earth sect disciple, you are truly arrogant. You really do think yourself superior, don't you? Circulating his divine essence, Alaire's divine energy gushed out. Then, he thrust his palm toward Maximus. Facing this attack, Maximus made minimal effort to hold out his own palm. When the two energy fields collided, Alaire's expression changed dramatically. He felt a mountain of energy pushing down on him. Before he knew it, he was gasping for air. His body was like a tattered rag as he was sent flying. Can't even withstand a single blow, Maximus taunted. Elaire had just gotten up from the ground when he coughed out another mouthful of phlegm and fell to the ground. Many of the other high-level true gods were shocked. Although they knew that the disciples of the Heaven and Earth sect were extremely powerful and could even fight those at higher ranks, they had never dreamt they would see Elaire fall with one blow. Many of the higher-ranked true gods were shocked, but Maximus was unfazed. Hilaire's internal strength base was not bad. It had reached the peak of the Sixth Tribulation true god realm. But so what? His overall strength was uneven at best. First of all, his divine body and divine soul were still at the fifth grade. The divine essence was slightly stronger and was between the fifth and sixth grade. Both of these shortcomings were significant. A normal sixth tribulation expert was expected to have attained the sixth level in terms of divine origin, divine soul, and divine body. This meant that Elaire had used too many shortcuts in his internal strength cultivation and hadn't managed to master any of the necessary foundational aspects of the martial arts. Alaire was obviously not someone who could calm his heart and cultivate. Even after taking numerous shortcuts, he was obviously still impatient. As a result, his foundation was unstable, even though his internal strength base seemed high. Put another way, his status was nothing more than an illusion. Maximus found it hard to imagine how this guy had made such a big name for himself in Mountain Peace City, even though it was considered a minor metropolis. Any random high-level true god with a stable foundation could easily wipe the floor with a lair. Maximus guessed in his heart. He must be assuming that because he is a member of the Faragamo family, he will be protected. Maximus's estimation wasn't far from the truth. Indeed, Alaire had only gotten to this point through the sponsorship of his clan, the Faragamo family. In fact, his family's sponsorship had been so generous that he had essentially become immune from attacks by his peers, which had led to his misunderstanding that those of his generation were afraid of him because of his overall strength. This would all change, of course, now that he had met Maximus. You're courting death, Alaire shouted, propelled by rage and humiliation. With just those words, he suddenly attacked. Wynne desperately attempted to intervene, shouting, No, Alaire, stop right now! He had never imagined that Alaire would be so stupid as to attack a Heaven and Earth sect inner court disciple, and one on the absolute dragon rankings at that. Unfortunately, Alaire was now extremely close to Maximus. Even if Wynne tried to stop him, it would still be too late. Wynne wasn't worried about Maximus' safety. Rather, he was worried that Maximus would become furious and give up on the mission completely. Great monument breaking hand! Alaire shouted. A mountainous energy pressed down on Maximus, and a huge divine essence mass repeatedly bombarded him. In his fury, Alaire had used his full strength right from the outset. Golden Immortal Heavenly Dragon Finger, Maximus countered. A deep dragon roar resounded throughout the space. Maximus pointed his finger at the Divine Essence Sphere in the air, and it was instantly crushed. In an instant, his energy attack landed on Hilaire's body. 
he began to wheeze as he was sent flying. After landing on the ground with a thud, he struggled to remain conscious, but it was no use. The high-ranked true gods on the sidelines opened their mouths wide. Even Wynn's body was frozen in midair, his expression stiff. All of them had heard of the absolute dragon disciples of the Heaven and Earth sect, whose strength was thought far superior to others at the same internal strength level. But to witness this phenomenon firsthand was another thing entirely. From the beginning to the end, Maximus had been sitting in his chair, calmly. This proved the massive gap between him and Allaire. On the other hand, Maximus had come to the same conclusion from the other end. It was now clear to him that Seventh Tribulation true gods from Mountain Peace City were not in the same league as those from the Heaven and Earth sect. Wynne had already stepped in front of Maximus at this point and explained in a hurry. Please, let's try to put this matter aside. I promise I will force the Ferragamo family to apologize to you once the mission is over. Brokan also had descendants who had disappeared from the forest, and he too was afraid that Maximus would give up on the mission and return to the sect in a fit of rage. Thus, he gritted his teeth and said, Brother Alexei, don't worry. I will make it my personal task to force an apology out of the Ferragamo family. Elaire was of course frightened by Wynne's and Brokan's words. Despite the injuries to his body, his mind was clear. What had he done? He stammered. Sir Maximus, I was in a trance earlier. I wasn't myself. Let me send a message to my family so that you can be compensated at once for the inconvenience. Maximus said calmly. We'll talk about the compensation later. There's no time to lose. Let's go. In truth, Maximus didn't take Allaire or his grandson seriously at all, so he felt no need to pursue the matter. Still, Allaire felt as if he had been granted amnesty. He repeatedly bent down to express his gratitude. Concha simply rolled her eyes, then speedily arranged for someone to escort Allaire back to the Ferragamo family compound. At the edge of the forest, Maximus, Wynne, and the nine Seventh Tribulation true gods descended. Maximus queried, City Lord, why must we stay at the perimeter? Maximus had already poured out his divine soul, which had reached the eighth level and was thus far more powerful than the divine souls of the others. Using this power of observation, Maximus had managed to cover nearly half of the outer perimeter of the vicious beast forest. Still, he had found nothing strange. The outer region was filled with level 2 ferocious beasts, which could only threaten a first or second tribulation true god. No matter how he looked at it, this region surely had nothing to do with the disappearance of Mirabella and the other geniuses. If a relatively powerful ferocious beast appeared in the forest, there was no way that the outer perimeter would remain unchanged. In that case, Surely some of the level 3 and level 4 ferocious beasts in the inner perimeter would take refuge in the outer perimeter. But in fact, there were none. Could it be that there was something strange about the changes in the inner region of the forest? The souls of the 10 Seventh Tribulation true gods were also sweeping around the outer parts of the forest. After a long while, Wynne said, It's no different from before! I can't find anything strange or abnormal. Something must have happened in the inner parts of the forest. Then let's go take a look, Maximus stated in a calm tone, then began to fly rapidly. When they arrived at the inner region, Wynne and the other Seventh Tribulation True God's expressions changed. What's wrong? Maximus immediately asked when he noticed. Wynne's expression was solemn. He explained. My friend, although this vicious beast forest is swept by us every 100 years, we only kill ferocious beasts that are above the fourth level. Thus, if we journey further, we will no doubt encounter some level 4 beasts from time to time. And then there are the Black Wind Wolves, which are level 3 beasts. 
We should surely have met some of those. He took a deep breath, then went on. It's strange. We haven't encountered a single vicious beast this time. Maximus narrowed his eyes. This was indeed not right. Ferocious beasts, especially ordinary ferocious beasts, were irrational. Once they saw a human, they would fight to the death. Could it be that the beasts were intimidated by the group's combined strength? This didn't seem right either. Ferocious beasts weren't capable of such reasoning. This was especially true of the black wind wolf beasts. They lived in groups numbering several dozens. Surely, a pack would not feel intimidated by this small band of humans. Could it be? Maximus's heart stirred, and he immediately said, Win, bring me to the lair of the black wind wolves. All right, Win stated, then immediately took the lead and flew away. No matter how many black wind wolves there were, they could handle them, given their combined strength. Wynne wasn't worried about any problems arising. However, when they arrived at the lair of the Black Wind Wolves, their expressions changed. Logically speaking, there should have been dozens or even hundreds of Black Wind Wolves present here, but they had all disappeared without a trace. All that was left behind were vague clues that a battle had taken place at the site. Maximus raised his chin and pondered for a moment before saying, as expected, these fierce beasts did not hide, but rather disappeared. Disappeared? The ten seven tribulation true gods looked at each other, but thinking about it, this was the only possible explanation. What had caused this disappearance? And what did it have to do with the disappearance of the human geniuses from Mountain Peace City? Could it be that they had been eaten by powerful fierce beasts? Brokon said solemnly, Oddly, there aren't any signs of violence. There isn't a single drop of blood on the floor. One of the other Seventh Tribulation true gods proposed, Perhaps some powerful force destroyed this group of ferocious beasts with a mere wave of their hand. Wind shook his head, then offered, No, some battle took place here. That's clear. It was just a quick one. The warriors felt that the entire matter was becoming more and more bizarre. At this moment, Maximus abruptly jumped. Wynne and the others were shocked. A white figure suddenly flew out from the direction where Maximus had jumped, as if it was trying to escape. Maximus struck with his palm. With a cracking sound, the white figure fell to the ground. Wynne and the others rushed over at the same time. They studied the fallen white figure. A skeleton? Win wondered aloud. It's actually a skeleton, another confirmed. How on earth does this skeleton move? Brokon chimed in. Maximus did not think that it was strange. Instead, he carefully observed the skeleton, then commented. The universe is full of wonders. Things that we think are impossible may be entirely explainable. Perhaps this skeleton is being controlled by someone. The group then looked down on the fallen bony figure. It held a spear in its hand. Maximus estimated that it was at the second or third tribulation true god realm. My friend, do you mean that my daughter's disappearance and the disappearance of the vicious beasts are related to this skeleton? Or rather, the person controlling the skeleton? Wynne queried, his tone sinking. Maximus nodded slightly, then offered, it's just a guess. After all, a skeleton suddenly appeared in the forest and was secretly spying on us. This doesn't seem normal at all. Of course, it's also possible that this skeleton is a special creature, and it just happened to appear here. If no more skeletons appear here, it might be a coincidence. But if… Maximus swallowed before he could finish his words. He scanned their surroundings. He didn't know when, but a large number of skeletons had appeared in their midst. Wynne's tone was cold as he said, Maximus, it seems your guess was correct. Someone is surely controlling all these skeleton figures. Since they want to capture us, I'm afraid this was the same fate that Mirabella and the others met. After finding the murderer, 
the group of seven tribulations true gods was filled with killing intent. Maximus narrowed his eyes and sized up the skeletons. They had on strange bone armor, but they clearly posed no serious threat. How then had they managed to overcome so many human geniuses, some of them at the seventh tribulation true god realm? The masterminds must have more powerful techniques that they haven't used yet. We can't be careless, Maximus said in a voice transmission to Wynne and the others. Upon hearing Maximus's input, their expressions immediately turned stern. They restrained some of their strength to prevent any mishaps. At the same time, a large number of white-boned figures suddenly charged toward Maximus and the others. <laughs>